All right. Hold on, Joseph. No show. Not right now. So our boys just both woke up from their naps, so I think this is probably about as far as I'm going to get today. But I went outside, I took our most, uh, the one that we had stripped down the most on the front and the back from the outer edge, and I pounded it for, I don't know, 10 minutes, maybe 15, probably closer to 10, um, with a hammer between it and just a pretty flat rock, just kind of pounded it back and forth for a while. And then I sort of tried to turn it on its side and pound it, and then I, I actually took it and bent it over and pounded it for a while. And then I twisted it, and then I pounded it some more. Some water, Joseph. And it turned into, it's definitely the fibers are starting to separate out. I mean, you can, you can see that here. Um, they're pretty strong. If this was a bunch of grass, I mean, they're pretty strong there. Um, I'm not so sure. Initially, I was wondering if this was going to turn into some sort of, like, Indian magic in the movie Suture or something with the little needle on the front if you really had to. You've been mauled by a bear. Um, I don't know. I don't know so much about that. This stuff is really rough. I feel like it would be just excruciating to use as, a, as suturing material. Um, and I guess if you had just been mauled by a bear then getting your wound closed would be more important than that. Let me see. Because this tip part is very, very sharp still. And it's pretty... I didn't pound it at all. So let's see how this is going to work. Alright, getting some pieces out here. Leaving the tip intact. Um, so... Maybe... You could definitely probably repair some clothing with it if you were out there and you had to. Um, I don't know, man, if I want you... I think I'd have to have been mauled by a bear to let you use this as a suture on me. But it does sort of, for, for some sort of macro, you know, sewing a hole in your coat or something, this I think would work pretty sharp. Let me, this is one of my work shirts. We got any, here we go. Here's a wash rag. Let's see if this is going to go through there. Oh yeah, well through a wash rag, like no no problem. So I suppose you could fix your sweater or something with it. Um, as far as making it into cordage, I think that would be, I think that would definitely work. Some of these spines I didn't cut off as long as possible, the, the fronds or whatever you want to call these things, but um, they're about, this. even this one's probably about 16 inches long maybe, maybe 18. So. And let's see, this is my little needle and thread piece. I'll save that one. Let me get another similar one. How strong is this stuff? Wow. Oh, wow! Yeah, that, uh, that started to hurt my finger. So this is some strong... <clears throat> um, yeah. This is really strong. For, uh... What's it called? Tensile or whatever? This is some strong cordage stuff right here. Um, so there we go. That's what I got so far. Pounded it with a between a rock and a hard place uh, for probably five to ten minutes, and it separates out pretty easily here. And it's I'm I'm pretty impressed by how strong this stuff is. I mean, it looks and it kind of feels just like some grass or something, but this isn't much thicker than a piece of uh, dental floss, and it's about like as strong as dental floss. This is the real deal. So pretty neat. I'll probably experiment around with this stuff a little bit more in the future, and uh, suturing. Ah, it's gonna hurt. Sewing? Apparently so. I mean, it's... There you go. You got your little needly piece on the end, and it's got a little 18 inches of thread on the side, so... This is not necessarily a edible plant, but it's a useful plant, and we're out here in the High Plains, which is almost like the Great American Desert, or whatever they used to call it, and we're in the depths of winter. I mean, it's, it's January turning into February, so there's not very many things that are still growing. This is one of them, um, but you can't eat it. But you can use it. Alright, shalom y'all.